Welcome to Tech Intersect. I'm your host, Tanya Evans, and my life and work exist at the heart of law, business, and technology. Yeah, I've earned a few fancy titles and degrees over the years, but the bottom line is I'm a writer, speaker, teacher, and lifelong learner. And I'm really excited that you've joined me on this journey. So what is Tech Intersect? Well, it's authentic, empowering conversations with really interesting guests who demystify complex topics to prepare you for the future, because your future is now. And it exists where law, business, and tech intersect. Get ready to listen, learn, and leverage. Let's get started. In this episode of Tech Intersect, I chat with Erica Jefferson, the president and founder of the Black Women in Science and Engineering Organization, or BeWise. It's an organization focused on bridging the leadership gap for Black women in STEM, although it is open to everyone because it takes everyone in order to truly achieve equality and equity in tech. She received her MBA from Georgia Tech and her BS in chemical engineering from Louisiana State University. She's worked for top companies such as Amco, BP, Chevron, and a myriad of leadership and executive roles ranging from sales and business development to supply chain in Operation 6 Excellence. Since creating BeWise, Erica has grown the organization to over 1,200 members and six chapters around the country, including in Atlanta, Austin, Chicago, D.C., Houston, and San Diego. Now, in this episode, we talk about the five key areas that women, Black women in particular, must focus on to enter and excel within STEM fields. And we address both the challenges, but more importantly, the opportunities in the future of work, especially for underestimated groups, because sometimes being underestimated is our greatest superpower, as Arlen Hamilton says. Now, a reminder before we jump in. My free one-hour masterclass on everything you need to know to get off of the sidelines and into the crypto world safely, legally, and confidently without having any tech or finance experience is coming up. This class is for new entrants and those who need to refresh their skills and learn the latest, especially women. And fun fact, women are the fastest growing group to buy cryptocurrencies, and that is out of a report in the second quarter of this year, 2020. So I believe it will only continue to rise, and I definitely want to make sure that you're not left behind. The masterclass is October 3rd at noon Eastern. Details are available at AdvantageEvans.com. That's AdvantageEvans.com. Spread the word. Tell a few hundred of your closest friends, although space is limited. So be sure to register. And even if you can't attend, as long as you register, you'll get a link to the replay. So definitely take a moment, register, and only take a couple of minutes. Go to AdvantageEvans.com. And now, on to this week's episode. Time to listen, learn, and leverage. Let's get started. Today, I welcome Erica Jefferson to the Tech Intersect podcast. So excited that she and I finally get a chance to connect and that you get a chance to hear from her and learn more about her organization. She is the president and founder of Black Women in Science and Engineering, also known as BeWise. And it's an organization focused on bridging the leadership gap for Black women in science, technology, engineering, and math. And the last time we connected, it was for my presentation to BeWise members and others who were attending. It, we were in the virtual space as we continue to be. I'm a huge fan of what Erica is doing for Black women in STEM through her organization in particular, and then also her journey to and through the STEM space. So I look forward to this conversation. We'll dive into all of that in a moment. But first, Erica, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I I so am amazed at the work that you're doing. And, you know, it's so important for us to celebrate each other and encourage each other and look out for each other. You know, half of what I do is, oh, I saw this. Let me send this to Tanya. Right. Mm -hmm. I I do that Uh, because it's so important. We're, We're all in this together. If nothing else, we learned over the last four years, uh, working together is not optional, it's necessary and required. Absolutely. We are all we've got. And all so we've that's got. really important. 
So that's a really great lead in to even um, let's set the stage. We'll, we'll get into be wise in a second, but I'm uh, intrigued in the path that led you to the STEM field and, and what your background and experience is to lead you to the point where you have become a leader in the space. I like to say I got in, I'm the bark, you know, everybody says STEM, but I jokingly say I'm the bark because I was there before the STEM started sprouting. When <laughs> I was uh, first introduced to science, there weren't very many Black women to see. And certainly as I progressed through high school and then even into college, there was just a scarcity of us. Uh, so it wasn't nearly the the focus and support that I see today. And it was hard. You know, lucky for me, I had, you know, incredible passion around actually chemistry and then the applied science of chemical engineering, which I guess propelled me. And I was just so stubborn that I was like, no, I'm not going to change my major. <laughs> My GPA is, I'm staying. And, you know, was fortunate to be involved in some great organizations early on, focusing on encouraging people of color in STEM fields, even though there weren't that many of us. And then was, you know, just so determined to get my foot in the door that, you know, I started my career as a production engineer many, many years ago, working for mm -hmm. an oil and gas company, you know, the Basic training, I like to call it, you know, doing the, the the dirtiest, hardest work that there is, you know, in manufacturing so that I could say I did it. I know it. I understand it. Now I'm ready to move on. So after several years working in, in operations, I made the leap to sales and business development. And, you know, I know a lot of people shy away from sales, but that to me, that's the only way you can learn that business. Right. You right. Can know you know, what your customers are thinking, why are they buying your products, what solutions can you provide? So that was a great training ground for me. And, and being in sales and, and business development, you also touch just about every function in business, right? So, you know, when I'm negotiating the deals, I had to work with the legal department uh, to write the contracts. And I need to work with uh, logistics and supply chain and make sure that the products that I promised the customers were going to get, we're going to get there on time and in the way that they had expected them to get there. So it was a real great learning for me to transition into that. Uh, I know a lot of technical folks shy away from those because they're like, I don't like to talk to people. Um, yeah. That's not an option. As an adult, you have to talk to people, right? <laughs> children, children are shy. I tell people all the time, children are shy. Adults are not shy, right? You just mm. may not like talking to people. So from there, you know, just did a couple different things in a variety of industries, uh, mainly oil and gas, moved to Houston, looked around and saw, hmm, there's a lot of us here in Houston that don't seem to be moving in our careers. Wondered what that's about. Thinking, you know, let's get together. Let's share things. Let's share knowledge, not realizing, you know, it was going to be an organization six years later. Mm -hmm. So I, I look back on all the things that I've done and I feel like they were preparation for this. And I know sometimes it's hard for folks to like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. When you get to where you're supposed to be, you can look back. And I was like, is that why I had to go through that? Oh, okay. Makes sense now. Right. So it was uh, a journey that, you know, I guess I complained about while I was doing it, but there was no way that I would be able to do the things that I do with Be Wise without having had that journey. It's so important for people to hear that because oftentimes when we are in the midst and, and 2020 is a prime example, we have no idea what this the purpose that this is serving, all that is going on, it's it's like a hundred years of living in in one year. Mm -hmm. We will see this at some point on the other side, and after we all um, have therapy for our PTSD to right. figure out what this experience has meant for our future, we are building our future today. Mm -hmm. And you know, in your story, I also hear very much the the journey of the lifelong learner as mm -hmm. well taking each experience and when you receive new information, you got an opportunity to make a new decision. And so there's no wasted effort in that journey. So that's really important for people to understand. Also for people who, you know, I'm mid-career. And when I think about, okay, 14 years in academia, 24 years in the legal game, I've had a lot of living. Uh, prayerfully, I have a lot more to go. What can I take from the experiences that I have today for any pivot or what's the next move. And I know that technology 
can help me do that because technology is always moving forward. Right. So would you agree that, you know, when people start to assess, particularly those black women who are mid-career, taking the best of what they've learned and figuring out how in the STEM field, they might be able to make that next move um, uh, from a leadership career perspective. Absolutely. Uh, the thing I, I'd say about those of us who are in these uh, science and engineering fields is that's the whole concept is building, creating, discovering, right? There's not really any other field, maybe law, but you're not discovering new law, right? You're just applying it. But that's the whole concept of these fields. Yet when we get in these jobs, you were pushing paper, we're having meetings and conference calls and all this. And so you you lose that one thing that you went into engineering and science, you know, to do. And so by the time you get to mid-career, you're just worn out. You're just flat right. worn out, right? Your head is down, trying to do the work. For folks who were fortunate enough early on to get mentors, advocates, sponsors, you know, their career may be on an upward trajectory, may, maybe even headed towards the C-suite. But the vast majority of us are just honestly biding our time to retirement, right? You take mm-hmm. more and more leadership roles to increase your salary. But, you know, I, I see so many of us in these fields that, you know, what did I do this for? Like, I don't even like this. And I always say that's because so many of us were advised by our nanas and grandmas and mamas. Like, you're such a smart young girl. You ought to be an engineer. We never thought, is that even what I want to do? Right. And then when I was coming up, there weren't that many even options to go in. If you were a chemical engineer, you worked in a refinery. If you're an electrical engineer, you worked in a utility. If you're a mechanical engineer, probably worked in a, a facility making gears and motors and things like that. Now I see young people coming out and they're doing all kind of things with these degrees, which I'm like, that's amazing. I mean, there was right. there was one career engineering career book in the library when I was graduating. <laughs> And it was like 40 pages. I'm like, is this it? <laughs> These are my choices. And so I think for folks who are mid-career, and I feel like as terrible as COVID has been, it has been a reset for so much and so many of us to say, you know what? Okay. All right. Okay. This didn't work out the way I had planned. I'm going to take some time since I'm locked in the house and right. take a step back and figure out what I want, what I don't want, how can I get there? So I think those of us who are mid-career, this is a great opportunity, especially with just the emergence of so many technologies. I mean, when in time during you know the human development have we had you know so much technology at our fingertips, right? Every week it's another, oh, well, we're doing the splickety splock. I'm like, right. we, we just got internet like 20 years ago. <laughs> you guys are on to something else. So I think this is a great time for folks who are at that pivot point, even if you don't know what to pivot to, to say, okay, what is it that I want to do? What is it that I'm good at? You know, I've done what they wanted me to do, even maybe what I was good at, but what fulfilling. And then you get to retirement. And then you don't know what to do with yourself. You're like, okay, I play with the grandkids for a couple hours. Okay, now what? But there's so much, you know, usefulness and talent and innovation that we've gleaned working in these jobs for, you know, 20 plus years that can apply to some incredible things. So I'm hoping out of this, a lot of us pivot into some incredible things. I tell people all the time about the comment, if you think it was hard to find talent before, Don't think because all these people got laid off that, oh my gosh, now people are everywhere. No, because these are clustered in areas, right? There's not a lot of whatever software developers are specific to particular software. Right. So now is the time for you to sharpen, sharpen your saw, you know, take some time to determine, okay, I've spent 20 years doing something that I was okay with. What is, what is it that wakes me up in the morning? I can't wait to do. I stay up late doing it way past the time I should be sleeping (laughs) because I'm so passionate about it. Um, And the one thing I will say when I started BeWise, I had a different mentality or mindset. And I was so concerned because those of us who've worked corporate jobs for 20 plus years, got to have that paycheck, got to have that insurance, got to have the stock options. But I was so concerned, you know, about maintaining my status quo and oh, I can't touch my savings because that's for my retirement. And I remember in the grocery store, you know, I'm looking at 
the the Oreos and I was like, I can't afford afford Oreos. I gotta get mm. Hydrox cookies. And I, <laughs> I, I played it so safe and so small that the things that came to me were proportional to that. And mm. when I finally let go and I was like, it is what it is, you know, either I'm gonna get rich or die trying. So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna get two boxes or two bags of Oreos and some ice cream. Things just opened up. You know, every time I say, oh my gosh, I really would like to do this or I really wanna get this. I'm like, why, why are you saving things? You know, you that motivates you. I think that motivates you because then you're like, oh, I got to pay for these Oreos now, right? I can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I mm-hmm. if I get the Hydrox, I could eat them slowly. But now I'm <laughs> this money. Now I've got to you know get out here and hustle and make this money back. So that's mm-hmm. one thing I would say. I certainly come come to me out of this journey is don't play it small. You can make wise decisions based on data and you know, information, but, you know, don't hide your gift. Don't hide your, your talent, put it all out there. You know, some people will like it. Some people will be like, meh, I'm not sure. Uh, focus on those people who are crazy about what you have to offer. Like right. the you like, Hey, I got to have this. Um, that's the, that's the situation I'm in now. Like my, my phone is ringing off the hook, my email, LinkedIn, I'm getting 20 and 30 connection requests a day. Um, mm-hmm. cause I've, finally let go and and gotten into that zone where I'm, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You love listening to podcasts, but have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Maybe you want to build a brand, grow your business, or are looking for an excuse to talk about your favorite hobby. Whatever your reason for making a podcast, Buzzsprout is the place to start. Since 2009, Buzzsprout has helped over 300,000 people launch their own podcasts. Buzzsprout walks you step-by-step through the whole process and will give you powerful tools to start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Ready to get started? Click the link in the show notes to get our free step-by-step guide to starting your podcast today. We hope you're enjoying this edition of Tech Intersect. Our conversation will continue in a moment, but first... A word on an exciting opportunity. There's a more cost-effective and time-efficient way to reach your leading-edge learning and earning goals to put you ahead of the stiff competition in this fast-paced, tech-driven economy. You need skills, credentials, and a fast track to a competitive advantage. You need it now more than ever, and I can help. Invest in the future you've always wanted, and in as little as three weeks, you'll be on your way to greater autonomy, control, and opportunity in your life. The Advantage Evans method puts you ahead of the curve with condensed, comprehensive online courses, curated content to leverage your current skills and expertise in order to succeed in the new economy, live coaching with me, networking opportunities, and a digital badge on completion. Upcoming courses include From Cash to Crypto, Buying Your First Bitcoin, and Register Right, Protecting Your IP, Brand, and Business. Ready for your advantage? Well, get on the fast track to learn and earn at AdvantageEvans.com. And now, back to the conversation. Absolutely. I heard somebody recently say, make sure that you're always who you are so that people who are looking for you can find you. Exactly. And and so the point is very well made. And I suspect that once people are, are drawn both to you and your example and also to be wise, you know, also the focuses of the organization mean a lot for those who are figuring out what's next or how to align their competency with their passion. Mm -hmm. Because we're competent in a lot of stuff and we can stay in that good government job, that proverbial good government job for 30 years and be highly competent and wholly uh, miserable. So I know that you're focused on leadership and career development, personal development, professional networking, entrepreneurship. For everyone who wants that full basket of information, you I will drop several links in the show notes so that you can follow there. So I wanted to set up the pillars for Be Wise. And if you could talk about one, you know, you've you've talked a bit about why you created Be Wise, but given the vision that you had for the organization, why focus on these areas? And then if there are one or two in particular 
that you are specifically focused on now in terms of your programming? Sure. So the personal development really covers everybody, whether you're a C-suite person or just starting your career, you know, really invest in your talent, your skills, understanding yourself, your likes, your dislikes, really invest in that. That's going to serve you regardless of what you know, you could do move to Jamaica and live off the uh, off the land. That's going to serve you well. Career and professional develop uh, professional networking. You know, nowadays how people get jobs is not applying online, right? It's right. knowing someone. So, are you managing your career upwards such that you can be in places where you'll get seen and noticed and tapped on the shoulder? Um, and that requires that you go places and, and meet people. Now, now we're talking virtually, but get involved, right? I always mm-hmm. encourage folks to get on panels and speak, write white papers, anything to get your name and your expertise out there. Um, leadership, again, something that's probably across whether you're an entry level person or a leader, developing, being able to influence. See, suggest, see ideas where other people see problems or solutions where other people see problems and be able to implement that fast, fail fast mm. and get back up, right? So those are things that I think are, are needed for everyone. But the one in particular that I, I'm focusing my, my most time on right now is entrepreneurial development, uh, because I think that's where the opportunities lie for Black women, for sure. And so we, right. by the numbers, have incredible number of Black women going into business for themselves. But number one, they're solopreneurs, which means that you only pay yourself. You do not have any workers. And we know that's not the key to, to building both wealth and lifting up the race or the community, right? You got to uh-huh. you know, invest in things and create things that other people can be a part of and, and work for you as well. And then focusing specifically on STEM, we've got a lot of folks who are in, I call it lotions and potions, making mm-hmm. makeup, hair products, things like that, cookies. Like, we don't need no more of those. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we need folks in quantum computing. That's where we need yes. folks. Artificial intelligence, blockchain like you. That's where the needs are. That's where we don't have many people starting businesses. And it is hard. It's, it's hard to get in those fields, let alone, you know, get the venture capital or whatever the funds are to get that. So one of the things that I'm working on now is creating incubators and accelerators focused on women of color, Black women in particular, in these STEM areas. One that we're working on, hopefully shortly, will be in the med tech area. So that both Uh is so important as far as, you know, things that are happening in the world, not just vaccines, but, you know, technologies above and beyond that to keep us all healthy. Uh, while we live on this earth, just so much that falls under, you don't necessarily have to be in health sciences or be a doctor, you know, just have to be innovative. I see something that needs to be fixed, improved, and I did it. So that's really where my passion is uh, right now, because it's so necessary. It's so necessary. You don't, I mean, half of the innovations in in this country come out of nursing because, you know, they want to do a lot with nothing. So I just encourage folks that if you think you have, now it is hard, it's not for everybody. So if you know right off the bat, I can't, I need a steady paycheck. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, but there's still I'll always way for you to have a side hustle or make some money on the side. But if you have just a inkling of interest and desire and an idea for a, a technical business, I wholeheartedly encourage you to to support to, and support you and hoping you get all the the equipment and and funding that you need to do that because I think that is so critical. Once we say yes, you know, making that and setting the intention, right, and not worried about all of the details because there are things that we can't know and we can't see. Exactly. But you make a positive intention, the resources and the people I know in my own life, you know, you start to attract the people and the resources you need in order to make that next step. But the willingness begins with you. And, you know, I look around, certainly, I I just, first of all, look in the mirror. I have a full day job, Mm -hmm. you know, a full visiting professor at Penn State Dickinson Law presently, and also have Advantage Evans Academy and, you know, taking what I have in my day job, because I'm also an intrapreneur in that space, Mm -hmm. innovating within my organization, but also taking my connections and my expertise above and beyond that 
every, if you're a regular listening uh, listener of the show, you know that I call myself the CEO of me. Mm-hmm. And I loan myself out on occasion mm-hmm. um, for W-2 income and for the experience and the connection. And, and that is always invaluable because I happen to love, love, love what I do, which is why I can take the best of that and see what other opportunities outside of traditional legal education there might be to educate others who might also be interested in business and technology and law. So it is possible. What you just said leads me to something I'd not had on my radar originally, but I know you must come up against the limiting beliefs of others. So some may talk themselves out of it before they even give themselves an opportunity. Have you heard from those who say, that's interesting, but not for me, or I could never do that? What are some of the key pushbacks you hear? And and maybe we can dispel some of those myths. I don't hear it very often because I think, you know, when I go places, when I speak, I'm just, I just exude like, no, not today, sis, not to say, not today, <laughs> not today. We're going to have a good day today. Right. Um, but I, I, I know that they're there. I know people doubt themselves. I, I mean, I'm human. I've doubted myself throughout my career and people are like, that's just so hard. You know, I've got a family, I've got this, but then you see folks who are doing it all right. They've got parents they're taking care of. They've got kids right. that are still at home. They're working a full-time job and they've got a side hustle plus taking care of a husband and and involved in all these other things. So it's doable. You just have to get that right balance and right mix of it. And I mean, when you have passion, you'll find a way, right? And I, I, I've heard folks say that, you know, entrepreneurs are crazy. And it's not that we're crazy, crazy. Some of us are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we have that dogged determinant. It's like, I, you know, I don't care. I, I'm, I believe in this. I know this is the right thing to do. And I'm just going to keep going and keep going and keep going long past, you know, when people say, why don't you let that go? Why don't you give it up? You know, it doesn't seem Mm -hmm. like it's going anywhere. You've got to have that grit, you know, so you don't necessarily have to be the smartest engineer or scientist, but you've got to have that grit that says, no, I think I've got something now. If you hear that enough times, you do have to also have the, the, I don't want to say intellect, but the insight to say, okay, well, let me go back and look at it. Is it something mm-hmm. I'm missing that I may need to tweak it? Right. But if you get a glimmer, you know, the first dollar I made, I was like, I made it. I made it. <laughs> I made it. So I think it's key to, to surround yourself with folks uh, if you have a desire for that, because it's easy to get dragged back into reality and say, I can't do this because this and such, but surround yourself with folks who are going in the direction you want to go. Absolutely. When you get weary, you're like, Oh God, I can't do this. They're like, come on, sis, we can do it. You can do it. Right. You know, don't, don't. And, and sometimes family and friends are the worst critics, right? Cause they're like, "Mm, you know, maybe you should think about something (laughs) else. Right. Is that, are you sure you're gonna put all your money into that? You know, that's fine. That's just the human nature. But surround yourself with folks who are like, you can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I did it. I failed 14 times before I made my first million dollars or whatever. Surround yourself with folks who are encouraging, critical, because you're going to need that. Some people are going to have to have some hard discussions with Mm -hmm. you and, you know, that's not the right track. I see where you're trying to go overall. But, you know, maybe there's some other ways to get there. So surround yourself with folks who are moving forward positive thinking, you know, making things happen. You don't have to cure cancer to have an impact on someone else's life, but look for folks like that. Absolutely. And do you know where they should look first? They should look first to be wise. They should. There are a lot of uh, Black women who are doing exceptional things in a range of areas. Uh, I did have a couple of people from Be Wise actually sign up for From Cash to Crypto um, oh, wonderful. Very interesting background and experience and wanting to find the synergies mid-career between, you know, their foundation and their particular discipline. Right. Fast forward to what that means for blockchain, distributed ledger technology, crypto assets, and and what the next move is. Uh, I guess, you know, some years ago, 100 years ago, maybe 150 people were living to like 50 40 Mm -hmm. even. Right. Um, Right. My grandmother, my Nana, God bless her, lived to be 103. She was smart as a whip and sharp as a whip to the last day. She uh, played bridge on the computer. She had taught bridge in primary school for decades. And 
all of her friends passed away, but she got new friends and, she, and we gave her a computer and she played bridge. She didn't exactly know who the other people were, but she was playing and she was winning. I <laughs> love so, it. I love it. <laughs> until you take your last breath, you can always have the opportunity to begin again and, and see what that means for you. And as you said earlier, this year is the year. Because so many people have been displaced or haven't either affirmatively left the space or been laid off or fired. Everything is upended. So this is the opportunity to create something new. Be kind and gentle to yourself, but do what you can when you can, but keep moving forward. Um, I know that you would, you would, you would say the same. Is there any, I'm noticing our time. We could go on and on and on, but I want to be respectful (laughs) of your time. So tell me if there are any upcoming events that you want to share and also how listeners can learn more about you and Be Wise. Absolutely. And I want to say that Be Wise is for all. We are an open group. We have men. We have uh, white people, Asian people, Hispanic. It's just the lens of a black woman that we see Mm. things. So we're not talking about anything secret that only black women can know about. It's not a secret society. (laughs) Not a secret society. Everyone is welcome and we need everyone, right? We can't do this work by ourselves without allies and supporters. So everyone is welcome. You do not have to be in STEM. I used to joke and say you do have to pass a calculus test, but I'm not (laughs) sure I can pass one myself. So uh, (laughs) everyone is welcome. Uh, We do focus on folks who are a little farther down their career than early entry level folks. That is our focus is mid to senior level folks, but everyone is welcome to engage, share, participate. Hopefully we'll be one day able to connect in person again. But until that time, we do a lot of things online. The thing that we've got coming up soon is a partnership we have with the pharmaceutical giant AbbVie for Mm -hmm. an event I'm calling Be Seen, right? So many times Black women you know, we're here, but we're not seen. So come be seen, network, learn more about what AbbVie is doing and all matters of their business to attract a diverse and inclusive culture and group of folks. It's on October 14th from 1 p.m. Central to 4.30. I'll make sure that you get the information to join us in the data, but hopefully folks will come out, learn a little bit more about how they can navigate their careers, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that we want to do is find partners who are serious, not the ones who put the statement out and haven't done anything since that statement came out. Right. Folks see their money where their mouth is. And so we're happy to partner with AbbVie and look forward to a, a great turnout. That's fantastic. Anything that I can do to be supportive and get the word out, obviously here on the podcast, but through social media channels, you know, I love a good social meets uh, <laughs> tweet or IG post and certainly on LinkedIn, the more the merrier. It's a large tent and it does require all of us allies and advocates all around to make this work. So Erica Jefferson, I appreciate you very much for joining me and for all the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for doing what you're doing. And together we're going to make a change. Leadership development, career development, personal development, professional networking, and entrepreneurship. The five pillars to success, as articulated by Erica Jefferson of Be Wise, they are the areas to focus on not only to survive, but to thrive in STEM, whether you're a new entrant or looking to make a pivot mid career. I highly recommend Be Wise membership. There is definitely strength in numbers. So set your intention, find your tribe, and thrive. A few final housekeeping notes. Please take a moment to like, comment, and share this episode and this podcast with your networks. Follow me on social media and let me know what topics you'd like to hear more of and who you want to hear from. I'm all ears. All right, that's all for this episode. Until next time, continue to shine. Stay in touch with host Tanya Evans via your favorite social media on Twitter at at Tech Intersect and on Instagram via the handle Tech Intersect. This podcast has been produced by Stephanie Renee for Soul Sanctuary Incorporated.